Well, hello everybody. Um, thank you for being here and being awake. That's great. Hopefully you will be awake after this presentation as well. Um, however, to entice you st to stay awake, uh, I can mention that this presentation has been partly made by child labor. Well, he's my son, so... And I did most of the work. So, um, yeah, according to my son, that's how I look like. And I, I'm, an, I'm employed by Lenoro. Mm -hmm. I've been working with the Bedder for 10 plus years, uh, involved in Linux kernel for six and testing for nine. And confusing. Uh, well, um, so Linaro is an open source organization that in, in improves Linux on ARM in various places. I'm not going to go through them at all. So, uh, there's a project called LKFT, and uh, we're trying to test the long-term supported kernels that mainly Greg releases, and during 2019, we've tested 76, 67 stable releases, and we've reported the status within 48 hours, always. Um, over 10 million tests is running. That's a lot of data. And here are the stable releases, and when they are end of life. And we also test mainline and next. And LKFT is just a project. We use various products. For instance, we use Lava to schedule the tests on our hardware, um, Jenkins to build our open embedded image. Um, Squad is the backend that we use to hook in to send out email reports to the list. And uh, we have a dashboard as well so that you can go in and see what fails or not. I'll go through this. So when do we run tests? Well, when Greg is pushing a new kernel to his to a git tree, uh, we a trigger goes on in Jenkins to spin off an open embedded build that I mentioned, and we that builds a kernel and a root file system, and we send that off to Lava that schedules a test on various hardwares. And we get some results back. And I'll go through that later on as well. Apparently no, sorry. Um, so we test on ARM64 and ARM, and also x86. About the email reporting, that's the template how it looks like when we send out emails to the stable list. And what I realize now is that I cut it just before, so we can't see the regressions in this particular run. But you, will see, you can see regressions and then fixes, and that's it. This is 
one view of the dashboard and this is for the next kernel that gets built every tag of the next Linux next repository and we run 150 test jobs in total and a lot of tests. And if, if you drill down, you can see to one of the builds, you, you will see that we do a K self test and LTP and so on and so forth. And if you drill down in even further, you will see, or you can see for K self test that we run on a few KMUs and all the other hardware, and we can see it pass, fail, skip. And this is the build process that, that, you can, that we get from Jenkins. So, now to the interesting-ish part. We do triaging on every release. If, it, if we have a regression or if we want to, want, if, there, if someone in, introduces a new test, we do a regression on that. And we categorize them into these four components, kernel, general, K self test that is a test inside the Linux kernel, test suite inside the Linux kernel, and LTP. So for our triage process, we we have been iterating over that in five steps to end up where we are today. We, we still have improvements to do. But I'm going to try to walk you th through how we ended up where we were. We was really naive in the beginning. Uh, so we... It's really hard to get tests reliable because it was running on the developer's desk but not in our environment, so we added a skip list. Uh, only for the tests that actually hang the board, because if a test hanged the board, we couldn't get any results back from our uh, test run. And when we added the skip list, it was perfect-ish. We got failures. A lot of failures. So, if someone asked us if how how is the kernel, can we release this one? Well, 700 tests pass and 50 failed. Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to say. And even worse, if it's 7,000 tests that failed, uh, passes and 350 that fails. Is it the same one that failed from the previous one? We didn't know. So, we had to iterate again, and we come up with a regression and fixes. So, if we compared it against the pre previous one, and that worked good-ish, it, but then we ended up with all the flaky tests that had timing issues and just a badly written test. So the data got really, really noisy. Oh, I'm a bit too, I'm speaking a bit too fast. I'm skipping some stuff. Well, 
we will get a beer earlier. Um, about right. There's a downside um, if we did what we did. We're hiding too much data. Um, we, which means that we, if we skipped the flaky tests, then we didn't know if they got fixed or not. So we actually ended up where we are today, where we have the, we can annotate failures in the UI. But then we have to do that manually, and that's really tedious, and no one wants to do that, because it's boring. And if I'm involved, I will miss stuff, so that's not perfect. So we need to figure out a way to make this automated in the future. Oh, so. This, will, this means that we will have a lot of Q&A. Any questions? I'll walk instead. What kind of uh, hardware are you running tests on? And uh, how do you queue up this hardware to test on? Because that hardware is going to be uh, occupied by a test, and you have several, maybe different tests that is compatible with different hardware versions. There were a few questions there. Um, what hardware do we run tests on? Was that the first one? Good. I think I had some slide that I tried to say that. So we're on test on Heike, Dragon Board, and Juno, that is ARM64 based. And then X15 from TI, that is 32 based, and then an X86 server. But that's just, uh, pro that's just processor platforms. Are uh, do you have any like hardware uh, specific tests that require like an SPI bus to some weird stuff going on and other hardware may not have that on? Oh, right. Sorry. I misunderstood your question. Uh, no. Not today. There is a USB test in K-Self test. I'm not sure that if we're using that or not. But there are... Well, no, not at the moment. And the second question was... Uh, if you had different hardware, how would you implement like a queue system for this? You have to know which specific hardware have a specific USB version, for instance. Uh, another hardware maybe not have that uh, USB bus, so you will have to like test specific tests on specific hardware versions. How would you implement that? Good question. Um, actually, our scheduler, the hardware scheduler, that schedules the sorry, our scheduler that schedules the jobs to different boards. Is, that is called Lava, and that is generic enough, so you could specify that in inside of Lava's, how you describe that hardware. You can specify that you have this USB, or you have that SD card. What was the name again? Of Lava.
I think I did reference it. Oh, sorry. It's the um, LKFT validation Lenora Org, second to last. Any more questions? Okay. So, uh, is your goal to test mainly the uh, Linux functionality, like the core kernel functionality, or are you planning on extending this to um, particular drivers as well? Uh, for example, the previous uh, question was about testing, uh, for example, the SPI bus, and I can imagine other buses like I I2C and uh, SPI, USB, and so on, uh, that has problems that you won't really find in just testing like core kernel functionality. So are you, my question is, in short, are you planning on extending testing to various um, buses as well? Yes. <laughs> That's the short answer. But um, finding good tests, that's the interesting part, uh, I think. As a follow-up, um, will you, are you planning on having a sort of full coverage of all hardware support in the Linux kernel? Because I've been battling at work with uh, a driver accepted into the kernel, which was uh, uh, less than stellar. <laughs> Uh, and uh, wasted a lot of time in um, having to work through uh, the bugs in it. And uh, apparently it wasn't tested uh, uh, very well. I, I suppose that's uh, the subsystem maintainer's job to make sure that happens, but it would be nice to have that as part of an automated testing as well. I agree, and um, I mentioned K self-test, I think. The mm -hmm. kernel has its own test suite in tree, and that's where we should add tests, because that, that's the place the maintainer cares about um, running tests. Okay. Thank you. Um, not so much a question, but adding to that, um, the problem is it so, takes so much resources to just run tests on all of the drivers. So uh, we basically need the hardware manufacturers to actually provide the hardware or provide the resources to run the tests. Um, so it's it needs to be a community effort in a sense in order to test it all, unfortunately. Yeah, and I can actually say that there are some projects like um, kernel CI that tries to do that and there are labs in hardware vendors um, labs so we, they, we spin up a lava lab there that connects to kernel CI and we run we do build and boot test that spins off at their labs, in their labs. So it's starting to get there. And we there are a few functional tests in kernel CI today. And we add more and more there as well. And there will be performance tests as well. both in LKFT and kernel CI. Yes. Well, I work on both. And our goal is to move over towards kernel CI and help them. Which makes sense to get more people involved. So you talked about the flaky tests. Are they because of poorly written tests, or is it just because of the hardware you test on is a bit flaky, or what is the reasons for a lot of tests failing intermittently or all the time? Both. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. yeah. So is it running more in QMU to get rid of the hardware to test it, or is it 
Is that an option to get a more stable failure rate, I guess, or? We don't, I think we, we need to test it on real hardware. We can test a lot in QMU, but we need real hardware as well. Mm. So once um, a new tree has been published, do you have an idea of approximately how long you have to wait until all of your tests are run and you get the results? Too long? As Is it think, hours, days, weeks? Uh, hours, a few hours. Um, another follow-up question on that, on the hardware resources, who who provides them and pays for the hardware resources that you run the tests on and, and the orchestration servers and so on? We take care of the hardware right now and we, I can't, I really don't know if we buy them or we get them from okay. member companies. So Is there a plan to make a kind of more distributed um, having multiple companies or individuals providing hardware resources in some kind of network to run the tests. That's where kernel CI comes in. Yeah, that, that and I, I've heard uh, of sort of plans in that project, but I wasn't sure on the details. Uh, um, that project already today have um, individuals and companies having their labs <clears throat> that connects to um, kernel CI. Okay. So, so Linara might be playing a part in that whole network in a sense. Yes, we, we, yeah. we do that today. We contribute yeah. okay. to Thank kernel you. CI. No. <laughs> oh. Any more questions? I have a question. Okay. Who, who think that testing is fun? Who likes to do tests? To write tests or to test? Yeah, to write tests. Good. Good. We, may, we need more than two. Well, thank you. <laughs>